To make it easier to follow along with the lesson, please reset your user settings or make sure the mouse presets are on three button or regular mouse. If you do not know how to change the settings, please watch our UI video first. Today, we will go over how to make the garments you made in Marvelous Designer ready for a game's pipeline. In this tutorial, we will discuss how to organize and prep your garment for an efficient workflow that is compatible with games. At this point, I finished creating my garment. For this tutorial, I made this pirate jacket. I already made my particle distance 5 and I'm happy with how it looks. Once you've created your garment and you no longer need to make any modifications, you will move on to our first step. You will save this file as a separate project and export out your garment. This mesh will be used as the high res to bake back on the details to our low res mesh. After selecting your garment, you will go under File, Export, and you'll select Object Selected and name your garment to identify it as your high-res mesh. It's also very important that you keep unified UV coordinates checked. Also something to note is that since I will be going into Maya, I do like to change the centimeters because in Maya, by default, I use centimeters. And with that, I just press OK. After exporting out your high-res mesh, we want to rearrange the patterns to look closer to what we want them to look like in the UV space. At this stage, I like arranging them close to each other. This is so that when we rearrange the UVs later, it will be faster to work with the patterns. Once rearranged, we will move on to retopology. This jacket has some unique pattern shapes that I will need to manually go in and retopologize. I will start with the front jacket body. When I retopologize, I like my edge flow to loop around areas of motion. In this case, I like having clean edge loops around my armhole. Please note, your shared edges of your patterns must match. What I mean by this is that the 2D pattern must have the same amount of vertices as the corresponding 2D pattern it's touching. For example, my sleeves are made up of two patterns. They will be separate planes in Maya and I will need to combine them. In order to merge them as quickly as possible, I will make sure that my vertices on the edges of one pattern match the number of edges on the other pattern it's touching. What's great about Marvelous Designer's retopology tool is that whenever you have topology that is touching an edge of your pattern, it will automatically produce a blue dot on any other patterns that the edge is touching. Make sure to take your time on this step. This will make merging vertices in Maya extremely easy later on. After we've retopologized, we will right click on our retopology and we will select Remesh Duplicate so that we can create a new mesh based on the retopology. If you already have your high-res mesh saved as a separate file, then you can also choose Remesh Replace to replace the existing mesh with the new retopologized mesh you worked on. For this tutorial, I used Remesh Duplicate. Once duplicated, we will move on over to our UV editor. Currently, our UV shells are scattered. But if you right click on the scene, you can reset UV to 2D arrangement. This is why it was nice to rearrange your patterns in your 2D pattern window first. When UVing, I like to scale uniformly and make sure that I fill up the 0 to 1 space as much as possible. Since I used Remesh Duplicate, my original UVs and my retopologized new mesh UVs are stacked right on top of each other. And so what I do is I drag and select my UVs so that I can move them all together at once. For games, I like to keep all my UVs in one tile, but this will vary depending on your project. Now we will go back to our 2D pattern window. From here, we will start exporting. We'll select our patterns in our 3D window and export. Again, this is because I used Remesh Duplicate, and so currently I have my patterns stacked on top of each other, 
However, if you used Remesh Replace, then you can just drag and select all of your patterns to export. Once you separate your retopologized new mesh, you will drag and select it. And under File, you will go to Export and select Object Selected. And from here, you will name your object and put it in the path where you can find it. From here, we will do the same settings as our high res mesh, which is single object weld. Again, we want to make sure that unified UV coordinates is checked and that we are exporting in centimeters. From here, you will press OK and we will launch Maya and work on importing our object there. Once in Maya, I have already set my project and under File, Import, I'm going to find my object and I will select my object and press Import. I'll select my object in the outliner, press F so it can populate the screen. And one of the first things I'd like to do is go under Windows, General Editors, Namespace Editor. And from here, a menu will pop up and I will delete my object, Merge to Root. I like to do this because it will make the paths be correct. I also like to take this time to organize my scene. The next thing I will do is right click on my mesh and go to Assign New Material. And then a menu will pop up. For this project, I'm going to be using a blend shader. And I will name my material according to my garment. In this case, I chose jacket. Another thing I like to do is under my modeling menu, I will go to mesh display and I will select soften edges. And that's so that my geo can no longer have any faceting. And at this time, I do like to delete my history. At this point, I will merge the shared edges of my low res mesh. This jacket is currently still separated by its 2D patterns, so we will need to merge shared edges so that it becomes one mesh. What you can do is manually select vertices and go under Edit Mesh, Merge. And you're more than welcome to do one by one. However, when I am merging vertices, I like to use my UV editor to find the shared edges easily. If you would like to see an example of this, please refer to our VFX workflow tutorial linked down below. Once we have merged all our vertices, we will delete history. And at this point, we will select our geo and go under File and Export Selection. From here, we will name our object accordingly. And at this point, I will be exporting out everything in FBX. We are now ready to import our geo into Substance Painter and start texturing. I have launched Substance Painter and we will go to File, New. From here, a menu will pop up. For this project, I am using PBR Metallic Roughness Alpha Blend. I will click on the Select button and a window will pop up where you can select your object. Make sure that it is your low res mesh. For my resolution, I like to use 4K, but that will vary depending on your project. And I select Open GU for this tutorial. And with that, I press OK. My object is now inside of Substance Painter. What I like to do at this point is I will go into my display settings and I will pick a different HDRI. I like to pick Tomoko. And the reason is just that it's a more neutral lighting scenario. And if you are in the default UI for Substance Painter, you will go to your right hand side and hit the Texture Set Settings tab. And then you will scroll all the way down and hit Bake Mesh Maps. 
And from here, a menu will pop up and you'll select your output size. I like to do 4K because you can always export at a lower resolution. Then in your high definition meshes, you'll see next to it a black box. And next to that is a paper icon. You will click on that paper icon. And from there, you will select your high res mesh. Everything else I leave as is, and I select Baked Selected Textures. And this will take a moment. And what it's doing is it's baking the details from your high res mesh to your retopologized low res mesh. Once it's at 100%, you'll press OK. And from here, you will check out your bake and see if it is done properly. I do have a few baking errors on my buttons due to the fact that I had no buttons on my low res mesh. So I will end up bringing in my buttons for my low res mesh and rebake. But at this point, if your bake is looking correct, you are ready to texture. And we will meet again once I have finished texturing. Now that I've finished texturing, I'm ready to export out my maps. I'm going to go to File, Export Textures. And from here, a menu will pop up. Make sure your output directory is pointing to the correct path. And I will make sure that I am at PBR Metallic Roughness. For this project, I am going to export out PNGs, but of course that will vary on your project. Press export. And just wait for your files to be exported. Once your textures are exported, we can close out Substance Painter and launch Unreal so we can finish our project there. Once you've launched Unreal, find where your object is inside of the folder and you will just drag it into your project. From here, a menu will pop up and you'll just click Import. It will bring in your geo, but it will also bring in the material that was attached to your jacket. Inside of my materials folder, I like to drag my materials. So in this case, my jacket material. And in there, I also like to bring in my textures. So again, in the same manner, I'll find where my textures are and I will drag them into my project. Once I have done all of that, I'm going to go back to my props and I'll find my jacket and drag and drop it into the scene. As you can see, since my garment is just a plane, it is see-through. And I'll show you in a second how I fix that. I'm going to go back into my materials folder and I will double click on my materials for the menu to pop up. And in this menu, we're going to go to our left hand side and underneath material, we're going to check on two sided. Once you check that, we will save and that should update your garment to look more appropriate. We're going to delete this node that came with our material. And on this empty space, we will right click. And from here, I'm going to type in texture sample and select that. This is where we're going to start plugging in our maps. Under material expression texture base, you'll see that there is a texture. And then a box where your map will populate. Next to it is a drop down menu where you will select your maps. And so I'm just going to do it one by one. And the first one I'll do is base color. I will select that. 
Once I selected that, I like to go down to my descriptions and just say the few so I know which maps are which. I will hold on to my RGB and I'll drag it into my base color slot. And I will start doing that for my all of my maps. So for this project, I have used a normal map, a roughness map, a metallic map, and a diffuse. So one by one, I'm just bringing them in. Last one. Once I have all of my maps, I will just simply plug them into their appropriate slots. So with my metallic, again in the same manner, I'm going to hold down my RGB and drag it into its metallic slot. Same with normal, I will drag and let go in its normal slot. And one more time with our roughness. You will save once you've plugged in all of your maps and it will update your garment. At this point, you can start your look deving. I did realize that my jacket currently is a little shiny, so I did end up making a material instance and correcting that. But besides that, guys, that is the full pipeline of how to get your garment that you've made in Marvelous Designer compatible for a games pipeline. I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you guys make some cool garments for games.